All right, so when you're dealing with a reaction, uh, you might not realize the reaction actually goes through several different things before it gets from the reactants to the products. It, if you look at this blue reaction, it doesn't simply go from ozone to oxygen in one simple step. There's actually multiple steps that we're going to actually call reaction mechanisms or the reaction pathway that, that the reactants go through to actually get to the products. Okay, so reaction mechanisms are a series of two or more simpler reactions that combine to form the overall reaction. And here's some words that you're actually going to need to know before we get started. Um, the overall reaction is not going to be called an overall reaction anymore. We're going to call that the complex reaction, okay? Um, and the elementary steps are the series of simpler reactions that combine to form that overall complex reaction. Okay, and there are some things that are um, that the reaction, here's the reaction down here, might uh, be involved in that reaction mechanism but are not shown in this overall complex reaction. The one of them is going to be the intermediates. And intermediates are substances produced in one elementary reaction, reaction or step and then consumed in another. Um, and then the other thing is a catalyst. A catalyst, you know, that are things that increase the rate of reaction. Um, you put them in to the reaction and you also can get them out unchanged. They are not consumed by the reaction. They are left unchanged when dealing with the reaction. Okay, so let's look at this complex reaction in blue. Um, it actually doesn't uh, go from ozone to oxygen. It actually goes through these series of elementary steps as indicated below. So ozone, which comes from uh, the atmosphere, also deals with, uh, reacts with chlorine. And chlorine comes from the stratosphere, they react together, and they actually output some oxygen and some chlorine oxide. Okay, so um, then also at the same time, ozone is also reacting with the UV in the atmosphere, and it's going to produce uh, some oxygen gas and some oxygen, um, an oxygen atom. Now, these two things are, are very uh, unstable. This guy's a radical, meaning it has uh, an odd number of electrons, it's extremely reactive. And this guy is oxygen. Oxygen should be a diatomic, it usually is never left by itself. So these guys are very, very unstable. So what's going to happen is those guys are going to react, and they're going to produce more oxygen gas and then chlorine. Okay, so um, this guy, since, since this is being produced and then consumed again here, then here, this is our intermediate. We can cross those out. Those are not part of our overall reaction. It's produced and then consumed. That's our intermediate. We also have an intermediate with oxygen, produced and consumed. Awesome. Um, then we have chlorine. Chlorine is actually brought into the reaction and then outputted unchanged. This is our catalyst. I'm going to box that off. That is our catalyst. This actually helped the reaction proceed, but it was we put it in and we got, got it out left unchanged. It might have changed within the process, but we got it back. That's our catalyst. Um, the, the catalyst is, not, is also not going to be part of the overall re complex reaction. So if we were to add this up, I'm going to cross out the, the catalyst because we're not going to include that either. We get O3 plus O3 yields O2 plus O2 plus O2, 2O3 plus 3O2 is exactly what we originally, our complex reaction states, so that this, they should add up to get our complex reaction. Okay, so what does this all mean? Like, why am I even doing this? Let's go over here. We can actually find the rate or how fast a reaction goes using um, the, the the rate the reaction mechanism. So before we were dealing with um, when you typically when you're finding the rate law, you're dealing with empirical data or um, experimental data. You have to go in the lab and actually do some trials to actually get this. But if you know how a reaction works and how the reaction the mechanism breaks down, you can actually figure out the rate law just by using the reaction the elementary steps. So let's talk about that. Okay. So I broke down. Uh, here's my complex reaction down here, and I broke it up into its elementary steps. Okay. Now, you're going to be given this information, whether it's slow, fast, or fast, um, and we're going to say this is our rate determining step right here. And what do I mean by rate determining step? Well, the rate determining step is our, is our weakest link. It's uh, the reaction proceeds no faster than the slowest elementary step, meaning that we can't go faster than our slowest step. Um, so this is going to be what our, what our rate law is actually going to be dependent upon. So we know our rate law backbone is going to be rate equals K times the concentration of its rea of um, whatever it's involved in. Since it's our slow step, I can just take this reaction and use this reaction. So I can say the rate is the concentration of NO, because we know it's the reactants, squared. Now when we're dealing with uh, empirical data or experimental data, I could not do that. I had to figure out what this, what this squared meant. Um, but, but using empirical data like we did in another video, but this squared can actually come from our rate determining step. This actually can tell us what the rate law is without having to calculate it. Um, and notice from our complex reaction, H2, it doesn't matter, is not part of the, uh, rate, uh, not part of the rate law. It doesn't actually matter how much um, 
a hydrogen I put into my reaction because it's only depend the rate is only dependent on the, how much NO is in the reaction. Um, and this actually is, a, is an illustration. This is our energy diagram that, ta that illustrates that fact, that this is the rate law because our notice, here's what we put in, that this is the first step, ni uh, nitrogen monoxide is reacting to form our activated complex and our activation energy is extremely high. Okay, and this is going to be require a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of time to get up here and get down to the products. These are a little bit slower. These are faster, as because our activation energy is smaller. Okay, as our um, mechanism indicates. You're not going to have to calculate this. You're actually going to be given this information, uh, but this is just a proof to show you or an illustration to show you why that is. So um, not only can you find rate laws using empirical data, you can actually find rate laws using reaction mechanisms as well by using the coefficients of the reaction mechanisms.